Hello and welcome to another wee Glaswegian Geeks. Today is a lovely little movie, a, a well-known favourite. Yes, a favourite amongst all mankind, because why not? It's not a predator, it's the predator. Yes. The original, you yes. might say. Ah, stick around <laughs> and you might learn something. If ah. you need, we can kill it. Ah, I got into Japan, folks. Ah. If you're going to do this the whole podcast, I'm going to actually kick balls. <laughs> like, I'm probably going to do it, so I'll just warn you the now. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, this show may contain only impersonations. <laughs> Bad ones at that. Well, speak Wait. for yourself. Mine's is pretty good. <laughs> Fuck you. Mine's is alright. Like, Fucking overrated bitch. <laughs> Me? Overrated? Naga. <laughs> Naga. I'm not overrated as shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 if you hadn't guessed, it's me, Mario, and I'm sitting in with the lovely James. James, today. I'm back again before I leave. <laughs> I know, leave me, you little bitch. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. What, long distance relationships? This won't be... This is a long distance, mate. Look, this is longer than my cock. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Ah, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can shag any maid I want. <laughs> no, it will be a long distance relationship from here on in, but don't worry, we'll make it work, I'm sure. Yeah, we will. And, and hopefully people don't miss me too much, you know. I mean, I mean I'll still be on podcasts, <laughs> but... Podcasts for days. Ah. Like, we've got plenty of me in it just to keep people Aye, to, sweet. To get your gay felon. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> but yes, Predator. <laughs> so what we came yes. here for. Yes. Oh, is it? I thought it was just to talk shite. No, oh, I'm, I'm forever hunting predators, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, if you hadn't really guessed, we are lovely, lovely people who do not rip the piss out of Arnie. <laughs> And uh, throughout this show, we apologise for any bad impersonations. Or James. for any point that Mario goes off track with the review. Yes, yes, that does happen the sometimes. I think, it's, I, th- I think it's pretty well established that Predator is one of the genre-defining... Oh, yeah. Like, know, it's... Sci-fi movies. Sci-fi action movies. It's, sci-fi action it's horror movies. It's always movie. been... Yeah. Well, the, the original it's, Predator It's was almost like a slasher, so yeah, you could... Yeah, I mean, I mean, the first Predator was very much like a... It was quite scary, actually. Yeah. If you'd never seen it before. If you weren't used to the Predator, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's... um, Again, uh, this, you know, really coincided with things like Alien. Yep. <laughs> Which I'm sure we'll get into with Alien vs. Predator oh. at some point. Yeah, oh. we're, we're, we're reviewing that before you go. Masterpiece. Mwah. <laughs> like, um, yes. So, the Arnie original yes, Predator. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I would... Nah, I'm saving that to the end. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, so the movie... A little short introduction of what happens. Uh, Arnie and his comrades are called in to rescue a cabinet member that's fell into the other side of the border and he's been kidnapped by these mercenaries or whatever. So he's sent there with the impression of rescuing someone, but basically finds out that the commando team before him was wiped out and mutilated, which is a very nice image. Seeing folk hanging upside down, absolutely of our skin. Yeah, give me some pork ribs or something. Mm, yum tasty, yum. tasty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the film itself is one of those very... I mean, it is a very military film. Even the Predator is quite a military-esque character. You know, he's, you know, the thermal imaging, the weapons. The Predator, what I love about the Predator is the Predator is always well-prepared. Yeah. But no. just that that's just his default setting to be well prepared. <laughs> like he doesn't get ready or anything. He is always ready and I love it. Um Arnie in this film plays a sort of Yeah, you know, your typical sort of eighties action hero, I suppose, and he, he basically like plays Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, you know? he basically plays just like ah, uh, uh, I get to be the hero. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump on cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, this ain't gonna I get do, old. <laughs> this ain't gonna get old. <laughs> I'll just do the whole review in it. We'll just make <laughs> it an interview with Arnie. It'd be great. Yeah, so Arnold, how was the film? Uh, the film is great, yeah. You watch it all the time. 
all yeah. the time. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to watch it all the time? It's got my face in it. Look at my man packs. <laughs> you know, it was so warm. I lost a lot of weight, but that meant I got to tone up again <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Mario, the fucking plot, please. Yeah, it's the plot. Back <laughs> the to the plot. plot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we find out pretty shortly that uh, his good friend, Dylan, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Who happens to be a son of a bitch because they lied to his good pal. And uh, that it wasn't just a rescue and a cabinet uh, member. It was for intel and to wipe out this group of guerrilla mercenaries forces that are on the side of the border. So, yeah, Ari's very pissed off. And then we get thrown into a lot of action. A lot of action. Yeah. Yep. One by one, slowly, uh, the predator reveals himself. Well, mm, not, maybe not revealing himself, but taking out each member of the commando team one by one, which is good because it's it. Like I said, it's almost like a slasher movie. Whereas uh, you're kind of uh, Halloween style where you actually don't see uh, the villain, the monster, until the latter stages of the movie. Well, I mean, back in these days, it was very important that, uh, I mean, look at the old favourite Jaws. You know, yeah. you, don't, you, you know it's a shark from promotional footage, but in the film, you don't actually see the shark, which, you know, it, it adds to the tension, it adds to the whole, oh, what's happening, where's the red herring and all that. You know, it's, it's it's always implying what it is, but you never actually see it, which makes when it is revealed actually even all that more terrifying. Now, like I said earlier on, when you first see a predator, it's fucking terrifying, right? Oh it's, no, it's no like an alien on the basis that you know that it's just a big mutated thing. In the shadows, it would look like a person. You know I mean? It stands on two legs, it has arms, it has fingers. Well, weird fingers, yeah. but it's got fingers. You know, and it can pass off as that in the distance, do you know what I mean? Predators are always found in trees, you know, they like hanging about. It's it's they set traps, they they're hunters, you know, and that's what makes Oh, hence the name. Yeah, well that's what makes the predator a different kind of horror villain. Yeah. You know, he's he's not they don't act on impulse, they're they're patient, they wait. And I that was something maybe about this time that wasn't really seen. I mean, you look at like you know Halloween and stuff like that, where the killers would just go for it at points, and they would always just get to where they needed to go. With this, with the predator, there's a sense of sheer plan and cunning, the ability to wait, the ability to isolate people, which makes you know it one of the the fiercest characters ever made for any kind of film like this, sci-fi, horror, or otherwise. They're they're incredible characters. Like, I love them. <laughs> I think Predators are great. Yeah, it's take it back to uh, characters created within the last maybe 30 years. Look at the ones that stand out. Klingons. I'm just going with sci-fi. Klingons, Terminators, uh, Borg as well. Uh, even, even further, 30, yeah. Uh, Doctor Who, you've got your the Daleks. Daleks, you've got your Cybermen and stuff. So, like, then bring it a little bit darker, Xenomorphs and stuff. The Predator is iconic, and it got that way through sheer gore. With this movie and the sequel to it, they actually they in such a short span of time, they gave such an incredible backstory to the characters of the mythology behind them. They're an honourable species, even though they ha- oh, ha- have all this technology that allows them to hide, that allows them to set traps. They patiently wait out, like you said, they wait out and strike at the best moment. But that's the thing, they've they've got this killer instinct. They're on their own in these planets and stuff, and it's just a hunting ground for them. It's a proving ground of sorts. So, and and you don't really see. Yeah, you actually do see it in the first film. Uh, later on, when some of the team have been uh, taken out, the predator doesn't go after the woman, and it clearly recognizes that. And in the second movie, 
he doesn't go after a woman because she's pregnant. So they do detect these things and it would be dishonourable for them to actually go out their way and to kill and hunt women. Unless, obviously, they were being attacked by them. That's something else I quite like about them. They like, they're almost anti-heroes. There's a method. There's a method to what they're doing. And you don't really necessarily know what that is. I mean, in the first film, Arnie's the hero. Arnie's oh. always the hero. Of course, of course. he's the hero. Of course he's the ah, hero. Of course I'm the hero. What'd you fucking take me for? Fucking choir boy. <laughs> Obviously, that is not from Predator, but we are just pulling Arnie quotes in for the sheer joy of it. Well, Mario is. Yes. I mean, James why stop there? Why stop there? Why don't we do a fucking review of Jingle All the Fucking Way then? If you're oh, so please, it? can we do that? Uh, that is one of my favourite Christmas movies of all time. Oh, fucking, right, okay, sit down. Yay! Enough, enough. Right. But yes, I mean, I, I like the Predators. I like how method they are, the, the, the plan, and the fact that they won't kill someone who's at a disadvantage. I wouldn't really say disadvantage. Like, the <laughs> let, let's be honest, anyone going up against them, unless it's like a hundred aliens, as, like xenomorphs, are at a uh, disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> come on. Like, they've got cloaks, they've got uh, blasters, they've got fucking like lasers that cut you like, up. yeah like they've got all this tech everyone's at a disadvantage but the the predators do not put themselves in a position to th- where they can be taken advantage of uh such as when the predator kills blaine who is played by jesse ventura he's the one carrying around a giant fucking minigun like who, who else is going to carry that around him or arnie you know it's one or the other and uh uh, one of the other guys, Duke, ends up picking up the gun, uh, the minigun, and they just obliterate this entire section of the forest. Uh, but you see the predator running away because clearly he's gone like, fuck this for a laugh. I just wanted this one guy dead. I'd, I'll take his out one at a time any other time. I'm not getting involved. And runs like, fuck. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it's like you say, they won't put themselves in a bad position. And I get that. But it's like you say, you know, the Predator's quite clearly there on a mission. And then, just by all means, something happens. And then he's like, oh, is that right? Is that right? See you later, lads. You want to fucking, you want to fucking start with me, right? I'll be back, and I'll fucking kick all your oh, balls. Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, oh. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. No. Okay, no. okay. Sit. Okay. Sit nice. Play nice. But yes, um... <laughs> Oh, you're itching, aren't you? You're, Aye. You're <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a bad rash, mate. <laughs> uh, anyway, the plot. Yes. Back to the plot, please. Yeah. Uh, no, we were talking about uh, the Predator and stuff. Oh, like, we were talking about the yeah. Predator and stuff. Aye, aye, aye. Like, it's, it's very cold and calculating. It's going to make sure that it gets to who it wants to and best place for it, you know? i.e. watching uh, two people run away, go for the weakest one, you know? Like, he's carrying a gun, so he'll go for him. But what I do like is the fact that he still still wears a cloak. That's to keep it secret. Obviously, the fewer people that know about it, obviously, the less chance there is of people coming to hunt it, which is a knock-on effect for Predator 2. I think what I love most about the Predator is... I I think what makes it more tense is you don't know why the Predator's doing what it's doing, but there's obviously a reason for it. Like, in the initial kind of starting phases of the film, and not until quite near the end, you don't know why the Predator's doing what it's doing. Yeah. And... You know, there is the bit when it saves the young the young woman yeah. from the soldier. Yeah. Even though the soldier just, I think, wants to help her. Yeah, But yeah. he sees it as he's attacking her. I, I, I wouldn't say so much as that. Like, the Predator can obviously, uh, through different games and stuff, have different uh, frequencies with their vision and can detect weaponry and stuff. So he's seen, the Predator has seen these people as having weapons and they're a target for them and what we do find out later is that the predator during the heat during the summer 
that's when the devil, as a woman says, comes out and hangs up all these people, skins them, uh, takes their skulls. It's so y- you find out that he attracts the predator. So it's it's nice to see a, a little bit of backstory, but not too much where it's like ah where did they get that information you know so it's nice to have a little tie in to yeah. everything and I mean it is that sort of it's like you say it's a game that the Predators play when this first came out you're just seeing the Predator as is we're spoiled because we can just cut ahead and find out what the Predators are all about yeah. you know we can just skip all that but when this first came out, you didn't know what the Predator was about. You didn't know what its point is. We see the Predators now as sort of maybe anti-heroes. To some I would degree. say ha- anti-hero because take a <laughs> it's not canon, and I'm fucking glad for it. But look at AVP. Like you, you look at two big bad monsters: there's aliens, the xenomorphs, and the Predators, and the humans caught in the middle. Now. The predators could easily wipe out the humans. They they do with some of them, but realistically, the aliens, the xenomorphs, the big are, the, the xenomorphs. are the bad, are the big bad. But so why would they hunt after humans who aren't really doing anything to them? Which is shown in the AVP movie, like uh, Wayland. Oh, he's got lung cancer. No threat. Just drops him, turns away, and then he attacks the predator. Predator eventually kills him, so there, there is that. Like they won't attack uh, weakened people or people basically already dying. There's no honor in it. Yeah, people who couldn't fight to the best capability that they could. That's what I mean. People were disadvantage. I mean, we do say everybody's at a disadvantage yeah. to the predators, but the predators maybe just like a challenge. You know, that's 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 what they want. And they get a challenge. We aren't they? Let's be honest. Aren't they puts up a fight? You know. I think that's what makes it interesting. We know, we see a different side to the the Predators, you know, because we've got years of lore that's yeah, been built up. Yeah, video games, comics, but uh, novels, everything. But imagine, take yourself back, come back to when this film first came out, you would be fucking shitting it. You wouldn't even know what the Predators were. And you would just see them as flat-out villains. Yeah. yeah. Superstitions, you know, that's that's what they're made out to be in the first film. But we know that they're sort of... We know they're aliens. Yeah. You know, we know that. So, it is this sort of point now where we get to a point in the film where Arne decides... After losing a few of his After losing soldiers. a few of his men, it's time to fight back, isn't it? Yeah. It's time to go fucking balls to the wall, get it killed, now. Yeah. So, uh, how does that work out for him, Mario? Well... <laughs> They've got a couple traps set up for the Predator. Obviously, using low-tech stuff, basically stuff from the forest and stuff, so it's natural, uh, organic traps, which we find out the Predator can see weapons that can see trip wires and stuff, so it's avoided them and set actually used, a, I think it was like, like a boar to set off their trip wires and stuff. Uh, just before this, so it's it's nice to see them going back to basics. Going okay, we can't take it out head on, so we're going to play it as own game. That's it. Yeah. they become the gorilla. They become the jungle. They become welcome the to the jungle. We've got fun in games. I'm sorry. I d- no, you know what? Fuck you. I don't apologize. No, 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 no! Please apologize. I apologize for I don't, fuck all. I don't, I don't understand you. Like, ah, uh, I'm a strange human being. I thought, being. I thought we, were, I thought we, we just understood each other mutually. I thought we. I told uh, you many times. I thought enough. <laughs> I thought we understood each other, but then you went away to a certain comic fair. You little bitch! You will be fucking humbled, boy. Let's talk about something uh, interesting. Oh yes. So, in this film, mm-hmm. we are treated to a bit of sci-fi alien action. Yes. Do you want to know why I think this film is very revolutionary in terms of, like, look at Alien, mm-hmm. first Alien yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. 
it was one alien. Yeah. And this is one predator. This is like proper original. This is what people kind of want films to go back to. The fear that one thing can take out plenty of like, you know, 50 odd people. You know, a plethora of human beings. You know, like, it's a matter of taking these characters, right, putting them into a situation, and let's be honest, none of them are really that likeable. None of them really are. Yeah, they're, they're they're not, they've all each got their... Uh, they've got their traits. Yeah, yeah. They've got their personalities. But the one we're watching is Arnie, just like an alien, the one we're watching is Sigourney Weaver. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's it. You're watching that character. And it wasn't until Aliens, the second alien... Where we actually genuinely did care about the other characters surrounding Sigourney Weaver. I mean, you might have in the first one, but I personally didn't. Uh, the cat. The cat. That, that was the only other character I cared about. Aye. Like, she was running away, leaving the cat in a box, like, you bitch. You go and back and get that fucking cat. And I mean, in this, you've got Arnie with all these other soldiers, and you really, I really could not give a flying fuck about any of them. Uh, there's only really one other character, like, one of, they all seem like they've got their... Uh, how can I put it? Trauma. Yeah. Like they, they. Some, so, so, some of them have really been struck hard with the effects of war and the depression. Yeah. <laughs> the depression. PTSD. You could, you could well, definitely say that. Well, that's it, and that that's one of the things that I do like about this. I mean, this film came out in the eighties. Yeah, it was and late. For some reason, to late. I am loving the special effects on it. The the Predator's cloak is incredible. It's just like a big magnifying glass. Yeah, yeah. It just you can tell that it's obviously put on, but oh, it's 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 highly it's, da- it's dated, but it's dated but highly fucked. passable. Like the the special effects in this movie are let, let's let's continue on with the story. Then we'll get on the special effects. Basically, the Predator sets off the traps. Uh, some of them are injured. They're. Uh, the command, the rest of the commandos are trying to get to the hell, get to the landing zone and get extracted, but the predators basically taking them out one by one, and then we're left with just the woman running for the helicopter, wherever that is, and Arnie, but Arnie decides to stay and try and take this thing out, and after going head on with it, he realizes that it can't see him when he's covered in mud. For whatever reason, he's like, oh, that's stopped it. Obviously, we know it can't see heat through it. So, we're all good with that. And That's another thing I like about it. The fact that things don't always have to be explained away. Because yeah. through common knowledge, you would go, all right. Because it's the cold of the dirt he's putting on him. Like, he's yeah. covering himself in mud. Like yeah, no ac- accidentally as well. That's how he, yeah. he notices it. Like it's that's the thing he's got. Pure accidental. Yeah, pure accidental. It's not like Arnie's just came up with the biggest, greatest plan in the world. No, 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 no. By accident, he's managed to get away with this because the cold of the dirt that's actually caked his f- face and body has covered his heat signature, which I think is a good thing for films. Sometimes it's good f- for a character to have a plan. Yeah. That's another thing for a character to accidentally, just by sheer yeah, luck... stumble along something that gives him an edge over this monster or villain. Yeah, and that's and it shows you the intelligence on this character that he could put two and two together. That he didn't just get back up and start fucking running. Yeah. He waited and he thought, oh, shit, he, he can't... Like, there's a weakness here. Yeah. And that's always good when the hero of the story finds a weakness. And I kind of love it when it's by just sheer luck, just because he's fucked it for yeah, whatever reason. Well, that's the thing. He's he falls in the water and he's crawling uh, to the riverbank, and he's you can see it in his face. He's just like, "This thing's coming to get me. I'm I'm fucked. I'm fucked." And then he's just like, just kind of looking at it, and it doesn't notice him. So he's like, "Don't move. Don't move." And it doesn't notice him, and then it goes away. And he's like, how, how didn't it see me? It was right, staring right at me. And that's what I love about it. 
Ah, I wasn't just using the muscles in my arms and my biceps and triceps. I was also using the muscle in my body. Ah, because I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, I have multiple muscles. I've got a muscle. It's my dick. Ah, all my maids have found it. Uh, special effects, yes. Um, <laughs> special effects. Uh, yeah, that one will be getting cut out. What can we, what can we say about yeah, special yeah, yeah, effects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, movie. Uh, so the third act of the movie is basically Arnie has he's found that uh, natural organic traps and stuff don't set off the predator. He's found out that the mud has now has made him blind to the predator. So this is Arnie setting up every trap possible to try and kill this thing. And it's absolutely incredible. I love this entire section of the film. It just feels like... They're, even though the Predator still has an advantage, this is the most even level, uh, even footing that the two characters have been on. Like, it's not going to be guns that kills the Predator. It's going to be all these traps. It's going to be Arnie's brain setting up all these traps, out outthinking, outsmarting the Predator, which it does very well with the, you could say, is killing blow. You know, the big log. Yeah, I mean, I think I like this kind of part of the story because through the natural progression of... Arnie's character, he was a guy who had just been so like, numb to everything that could happen in a war and then in this, he's lost absolutely everybody who could have helped him Yeah, and he's just miraculously alive. it's like an awakening for him, it's like right he now can't see me so what can I do now like, it's, it's the choice you know, it's the choice, do I kill this thing or do I try and leave because the easier route is to leave. Oh, he could leave, like, no bother. He could just kick himself in mud and just go through the forest to make sure he gets away. But for some reason, he decides to stick around and he's like, nah, he's killed all my friends, my peop- friends that I've worked with for countless years. We've been all over the world together doing this and that. And... He's like, nah, I'm I'm gonna fucking annihilate him. Yeah, that's it, and it's it's that endless, never-ending loss that makes him obviously want to fight back. And that is, this is obviously the best part of the film. Oh, this hands, is, hands, hands down. down, this is where the action happens. Like, know? like Arnie bending some branches together. You get to see, you get to see my pecs. Uh, look at them. Look like at my biceps. I say to the director, I want to show off my biceps and triceps because those are the most important parts and also my chest because I've been really working on pumping iron. I love pumping iron. <laughs> it's like coming. Obviously, that's from a different Arnie film, but yes, you get where I'm going. <laughs> it does feel like that in a lot of Arnie films because he, wa- cause he has a bodybuilder. Oh, of course. Come on. Specific- Come on. Do you think Robert Downey Jr. signed on to Iron Man going, hold on. My character's going to be wearing a full fucking suit. No, no, no way. There's going to be some kind of way we're going to make it happen where you see this face. This face is the face that sells it. This (laughs) is the face that sells a movie. Arnie is like, any chance I can get to work with my top off? (laughs) You're in a fucking jungle, mate. It'll be sweltering hot. You wear whatever the fuck you want. That's another thing about this film. Uh, Endless topless men. Yeah. Endless. I bet you felt in your element here. Unattractive. For years. Was was this your uh, discovery that you were gay years ago? Watching this movie going, I'd like Arnie oh, wreck me. Ah, I'd like ah, Arnie wreck me. Do you know what it was? Do you know what it was? I actually kind of became Arnie for a minute and I just looked at the predator and gone, you are the one. <laughs> ah, the ah, you, c- you can fuck me. Ah, <laughs> ah, fuck me. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> a predator. I, I mean, the predator was my first love, to be honest. Um... <laughs> It's um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It was beautiful. You, you, uh, you had to be there. You oh, be oh, there. I, 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 it surely yeah. would have been one of those moments. Because you know, something looks on the everything. <laughs> and, uh, yes. The, person- look- the predators always have a great personality. Uh, and they can cook you dinner. And they hate people. And yes. I hate people. So you know, me and the predator just get on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
<laughs> but the uh, above all, Predator was he was a man. Oh, <laughs> showed me a good time. Anyway, on to the yeah. So uh, Arnie basically sets off all his traps, draws the Predator towards him, and gives him as good as he gets. But then the Predator just has enough of it. Takes off the mask, realizes that uh, he's wearing, he's he's somehow turned himself blind to the predator. So takes off the mask and just fucking tears him to bits. That like that is one of the scariest scenes in the movie where you full on see the predator in full. Like he's he's got this mask, you know. You're just thinking, oh, it's something you'll never see its mask. But when it takes a mask off, it is one of the most memorable and horrifying faces you will ever see. It's almost like, is it Jason, uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, where Jason's got this pure, like, melted, like, zombie face? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, I think more and more, because, like, when you watch this, you see you start to see the Predator as an alien. Uh, you start to, At first you see him as a monster. Then you start to kind of say to yourself, oh wait, this is a sci-fi movie. It's an alien. But when he takes that mask off, to me, that that kind of shows a a form of intelligence. Oh, of course. To go, I've sussed your game out, son. Rips the mask off. Now I'm going to kick your cunt in. Oh, aye. It's a level of intelligence because the Predator's got all this high-tech stuff and Arnie has to go back to Guerrilla Warfare yeah. covering himself in mud. So, what does the, the Predator do? Plays him at his own game. Yeah, like, rips oh, the technology I don't need off and tech. goes, fuck it, you want to fight me like a man, alien thing? I'll fight you like a man, alien thing. And it is, it's, it's, a, it's an absolutely, I don't think Predator is so much scary, more so the f- the tension in it. Even just in the scenes where you just see the cloaked Predator just slowly move and it slowly gets more and more prominent. That's something I find really, really interesting. And I just think it's great. Yeah. I just think it's how it's all done. It's it's man versus monster, but the monster is just as intelligent, if not more intelligent. The only difference is, is Arnie, by the end of this film, has a reason to fight. Yeah, and he's caught on to its game. It's It knows its strategy. It knows its technique, so... He's combating it with like for like. He's sneaking about. He's planting all these traps. He's actually got an advantage now over the alien. So there was a there was a film. Uh, I can't, I, I, the name escapes me. Was it Enemy at the Gate about the two snipers? Yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, two people who are two characters who have the same goal to kill one another, and they're both playing the same game now. So it's who's better at that game. And like like you say, just like when he when he f- messes up the cloak, that's when the predator starts to get a bit pissed. Oh, <laughs> like oh, come on! It is fucking raging. It, it, <laughs> it's it, fucking raging. It, yep. it doesn't even know where to shoot. It's just aiming blind. It's going like, okay, I was, I seen something come down. I'm aiming high. I'm just taking out anything up above. Like it, this is where the predator is probably at its most dangerous. It knows. It's been set up, but it's just... It does it's going it wild. It's going wild where before it was cold, calculating. It was working its kills to the perfect moment where it could be one-on-one and also get... Ha- it would have something over on, the ca- on one of the other people. But this is where he's had enough in... Well, it, its advantage... Its, its advantages are slowly dwindling here so this yeah, is I mean, this Arnie's is where it's at it's most dangerous yeah i mean Arnie's character has finally done some damage to it like it's it, it can't cloak now so now it's like fuck me i can't sneak around unless i go up into the trees but Arnie has picked a place specifically where there aren't many trees yeah so it, it's that it's a character taking the knowledge he has of the area that he's in making something and making the best possible plan available and that's obviously what pisses the predator off because now the hunter is becoming the hunted. And, you know, it's a classic story, but, I mean, at the time this came out, revolutionary, if you ask me. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Like, this has... Uh, 
It's funny. Always, back, it's always back in the day, you're sitting rooting for the human character, and you're like, oh, and yourself, son, kick its cunt in. Oh, aye. Then it, the day we're all sitting there going, I hope that alien fucking just destroys us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, we're all cynical now. We're all sitting there going, fucking just end us. Like, destroy us. We don't deserve to live. Like, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But when I do watch Predator, I do find myself sitting there, and the alien, I sit there rooting for Sigourney and Arnie. Like, go on. Go like, on. Here, here's something as well with Predator. And... N- not even Predator, just any action movie. Apart from Dwayne The Rock Johnson, is there any actor that is as physically imposing today as Arnie is in the 80s and 90s? The Mountain for Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, but is The Mountain... Uh, I forget what his name is. Uh, but is he... A I nearly swore there. Is he as good an actor as Arnie? Is Arnie a good actor? Well, that, <laughs> that, that, is the that, question. that was a swear. <laughs> uh, I would, I would actually say Arnie's a good actor. Like he, he's good in what he does. I mean, I would, I wouldn't like to see him do any like Shakespeare work because it would just butcher. <laughs> ah, to be, or oh, not to be. Ah, that is the question. <laughs> to fuck my maid, or not to fuck my maid. That is the question. Yeah, that's getting edited. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's that famous Shakespeare play? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could imagine I'm doing Shakespeare looking at you. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Like, <laughs> deny thy father and refuse thy name. Like, you know what I mean? It just wouldn't work. Nah. It just wouldn't. You know, it's not like he's fucking... No, he'd be racist towards his accent, but he doesn't have a Shakespearean accent at all, and I don't think he could pull himself away from that to do it. Is Arnie a good actor? Let us know in the comments. Let yes. us know if you <laughs> think he is a good actor. I mean, I think he's. I think he's a. I think he's kind of in between. There's times you see him and he's really, really good, and there's times you see him and he's really, really bad. I just like in an action movie. That's what you want. You want a big guy that will like. Get absolutely fucking destroyed. But I mean, but then pick himself back up and just annihilate everyone. He's a great in his action path. movie star. Oh, fucking but right. Fucking right. He goes. He'll go in the Hall of Fame as one of the best ever. Right. Oh, but one of the. I would have to say the best. Oh, but see, I like Stone. I feel like Stone. Uh, I don't know. I I I'm more Arnie than Stone. I think. I think that's why I like the Expendables a wee bit. Because you see Stallone and Arnie pure, like, try to fight for the top spot, don't you? Fuck it, end it on that. Dolph Ludgren. Big Dolph. Big Dolph's my boy. He's my main squeeze. He's good. I like... I, I, I definitely think Arnie will go down in history as possibly one of the, the greatest action Hands heroes down. in existence. I'll, I mean, this, this is the guy that became the fucking governor, do you know what I mean? Like, well, look at the movies that he's been in action-wise. Predator... The Terminator franchise. Terminators, he's like he's that's matter. that's like he could just retire and never do another movie again. And well, apparently not, because when he stopped being governor, he had to go back in and do another shit Terminator for him, didn't he? I kind of, I kind of liked it, but as a separate movie, if it was a complete reboot and we'd never seen uh, shut a, a, your a fresh whole mouth. No, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Don't interrupt. Terminator 1, 2, good. 3, uh, 4, <laughs> really, huh? <laughs> uh, Genesis. If that was my first introduction to Terminator, then it would be an average to good sci-fi movie, but because it's a follow-on and it basically wipes out T1, 2, 3, and 4, don't mind 3 or 4 being wiped out, but 1 and 2, I'm kind of soured upon if you get me. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. But of course we're not talking Yes, 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 yes. We will discuss that another day. And then I'll We are sure. Because we will uh, we'll we'll be back another day to talk about more Arnold. Because who doesn't love talking about Arnold? I will rip Everybody you. loves Arnold, not Raymond. Who's this fucking Raymond? Fucking little pussy. Ah. Are you done? <laughs> yeah. I told you shit impersonations. I didn't think it would be to this extent. Oh, fuck. Right, fuck. Can we talk about the fucking special effects, please? Yes, yes, let's Thank get on to you. the special effects of this movie. 
a uh, few explosions, which is you know Branches basic getting for cut your off, getting uh, lasered off. <laughs> like yeah, the special effects uh, into the costumes of the corpses, like the bloody bodies, the skulls and stuff. The predator costume as well is no pun intended out of this world. Oh, I absolutely like the. I mean, if that look, design is fucking incredible. Bring it to the old alien v- AVP thing, right? You know how, like, an alien and aliens? Yeah. I don't think there's much in the way of special effects. No, no in a huge mm. way. There's no much. It's mere practical. Yeah, yeah, which I love. Like, I'm, Ped- I'm a, I get a major uh, hard-on for any practical effects. I hate the use. Uh, I, d- I, don't, I don't hate the use of CGI. I hate the use of bad CGI. Unless it's a really like cheesy movie like Machete, where there's bad CGI in that. Uh, intentionally. Yeah. No, but this is the thing. Predator took the more... like There is practical effects. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, oh, yeah. There's ultimately practical effects. But there's special effects in this as well. With the cloaking. And while they are dated, are really, really Fucking good. Fucking incredible. Like, also, the... The heat vision that the predator uses, if you don't know about that, Bog because it, yeah, but because they were doing that in the jungle, everything was shown up red. So they had to actually go around the sets wh- before uh, filming through the thermal imaging, uh, ice cold water around the sets. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. everything was going up red. That is something that I f- like. That is they could have just went. Ah, uh, it's it's. Doing a, it's so much work to get this uh, done, but they stuck with it and they made it happen, which I absolutely fucking love. It's that alone shows the dedication to the team. And also, can we share a couple moments of what the predator was gonna look like? Well, give me a sec. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, one other thing I love about this film is they the, the, they stuck to one location. This yeah. film all happens in one location. Yeah. yeah, you know that's that's pretty remarkable that for one location you can keep people gripped. And Predators goes down as one of the greatest, you know. And all it took was one location, albeit a very big location. Oh yeah, using different parts of it, but it was all one location. It was all pretty much the cast. You're given all the cast for the start, pretty much, and they just slowly start dwindling. That and and like you're saying, obviously about cooling the whole set down before they filmed. That takes great dedication but see because they're only using one location it just becomes routine they just keep doing the same thing every day and that's what makes it work you know that's what good and uh, maybe that's probably why a lot of the thermal imaging there was not as much as you might think yeah <laughs> like, like you know obviously I mean? back when they'd done this it would have been a lot harder to do whereas now if they do they're re uh, they're doing another predator movie i'm sure that'll come second nature now like they don't need to do that they, there'll be a, a great step forward in technology where they don't need to go around spraying ice water on everything. Oh, look at look at f- look at any f- the first zombie film ever made. You know, Night of the Living Dead, and move forward. These are all things that have taught us today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Predator as well. You know, without Predator, without Alien, without Star Wars, sci-fi wouldn't be what it is. Do you know what I mean? And that's what makes these kind of things ultimately very special. The fact that we look at these things and go, they were using next to nothing. They were using different things. They were using... It was a different time. Oh, yeah. And they were still managing to make blockbuster films that are still better than some of the films in the day. Easy. Easily. Easily. So, you have to ask yourself, what are we doing doing wrong today? Probably everything. Probably everything. Go back to the old way of doing it. Maybe we'll all enjoy it now. But I that's a that's another thing. So let's talk about the predator. Yes, 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 yes. How yes, he yes. used to look. <laughs> what he was gonna look like. Yeah. Some big fucking like insectoid fucking alien thing. Cause I imagine him doing the Hannibal Lecter thing, the Yeah, <laughs> almost, yeah. Clary. Uh, uh, let, let's be honest, like what would you rather go up against? What the predator used to well, was originally intended to look like, or that. Obviously, the other one, the the former, you'd be like, <laughs> you look stupid, I can run away for you. That I one, think, you'd I think, be like, oh, fuck I mean, that. I think that 
See the Predator in this one, they've obviously changed the Predator since this, but see the Predator in this film, fucking terrifying. Like, it used to be, like, the, you know, their mouth opened up. Yeah, the mandibles. Looked, yeah, they, they just looked like a huge fucking vagina for a mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but in this, like, he's, the mouth is, like, sort of closed up. Like, um, a little bit, like... No, no. No, it's the same. It's the uh, same. No, it's the same. It's the same. But like, see when he's laughing, and the sort of like w- w- mandibles. <laughs> the mandibles, like yeah. normally, no, you expect like the mandibles are like really open. And it's like so it's it's well. probably just CGI, just going uh, animate them more, have them like sticking out more and stuff. I loved you it know? when it because he still looks like an insect, and that's the predator. Because the, the mandibles are like sort of yeah, it's kind of like and you're just seeing wee bits here. It's weird. It's fucking. It, it makes me uncomfortable. If anything, like the predator does, make me genuinely uncomfortable. But I'd be rooting for him, put my money on him in a fight. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's just that. I don't, the original predator just looked like a fucking maniac. No, he did just look oh. like a fucking insect. He looked like Aye. a fucking. Do you know what he looked like? A fucking grasshopper. That's what he looked like to me. Mm, yeah, yeah. Bit weird. Bit strange. Don't get me wrong, the Predator does look weird and strange. <laughs> but it looks slightly more passable. So, aye. It's one of the, it's, it's going to be one of the best. This, this movie. I still it, think the original Predator trumps all the other Predator films. To be quite honest. I would say the sequel does try and build upon it a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more info on them, which maybe ruins... The whole mystery behind them. Uh, the mystique, the sort of... The Predators, which is a good movie. I like it. It's it's a good movie. It's got a good cast. But I feel... There's, there's just something off with Predators. AVP, I don't it's, think it's basically giving you a little bit more in- history about it, but I, I don't like it. I mean, I must say, for, like... Not just, not just like for the matter of like I just don't think the Predator films. Well, I do think a lot of them are good. I don't think they'll ever really live up to what this was because I mean this actually had a story a guy of soldiers who had just been through the ringer and they just wanted it to stop and then this all happens. So you, there's a journey which I don't feel there really is in other ones. Is no no one that's particularly relatable to some degree, you know, and I must say another thing, you know, if you want to talk about diversity in Hollywood, these, aren't these films always had a big racially diverse cast? Yeah. He was, like, I, I mean, I, it certainly covered a lot of bases, you know, you had people from various different ethnicities in these films, and it j- I think that just helped make it all blend a bit more, you know, it just helped everything just seem to work, and just, it felt real. Yeah. They certainly pass it off as looking very, very real. And they pass his off as, like, the leader of the group. Do you know what I mean? And he suffers when somebody dies. Do you know what I mean? But he's just trying to keep it cool. Characterization-wise, you know, it is, it is a great display of Arnie's ability to act. Cause oh, of course. When people die, he genuinely feels burdened by it. But he's in his head, he's like, I need to stay cool for everybody. Like, I need to make sure that... Ah, if I start showing cracks, then that's not going to help anyone else. Yeah. Exactly. And that's um, what's interesting. And ultimately, at the end, it becomes very triumphant, and we all we all go away happy. Yay! But uh, if you want to talk about sequels, no sequel to Predator has bet the first one to me. Nope. Nope. Totally agree with you. Uh, this actually has been one of my favourite movi- movies of all time. I would rank it in my top ten movies of all time. It's, it, 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 even to this day, it still feels fresh and brand new, you know? It, you watch something newer. Whenever you watch it, you and know what you're going to get. Like, the, the, pra- the, ma- the main thing for me, like I said, is practical effects. I love practical effects. The more movies should be doing them, but obviously, cost, and it's easy, apparently easier to do CGI and whatever. And so. <sighs> There's there's that involved, but I I'm a sucker for practical effects. Obviously, good ones, bad ones can go suck a dick. Uh, I think Predator has a good blend of practical and CG. Like look look at T two, right now, dated, very dated, but the CGI in that is 
actually really good for its day. It's having an argument with people, like people who are like, oh, the CGI in Terminator 2 is shit. I'm sorry, did you know when it came out? Like, do you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, you have to... I, I don't like people saying, oh, back then this was shit. You have to oh, sit and off. say, look at what it was like back in that, that was day. groundbreaking. Like, you know I mean? I'm sure the the thermal Im- imaging and the cloaking of the Predator for its day took a lot of fucking time and effort to put in. Where nowadays you can just, oh, magic it up on a fucking computer. But... Right. But Absolutely. but the people that do it today that done it back then get the same credit. Do they fuck? Like the ones that made this film work, Predator work, when it came out, should be fucking there should be a fucking Mount Rushmore of their fucking faces. Well, this is what I'm saying, like it's just to me it's like I mean I, I mean I have I have arguments with people daily. And um People they always say it. it's like oh I, I, that film back in like the nineties you know the special effects were pretty naff weren't they and it's like what do you expect it was the fucking nineties like yeah. for they they didn't have proper fucking computers back then you know everything had to be practical like you look know, at look at look at Star Wars every uh, fight scene in space is only practical miniatures like that is fucking incredible and then you look at the the sequels well the, the prequels in uh, episode 7 Force Awakens and stuff Rogue One and it's all CG you can tell and even though they look probably more beautiful now than they did then adding in shadow and stuff I still love practical those kind of like miniature designs and stuff to play off stuff you know like they've done it in uh, Aliens as well in the hangar bay with the dropship and the power loader and stuff they've they they done a blue screen with stuff. Uh, I th- I think it looks like st- uh, stop animation for the power loader, and hell, it looks fucking dated. But you you look at it and you go, wow, they they probably put in a lot of effort for that. Which hell, better them than anyone that's doing it now. And that's not slagging anyone that's doing CGI and stuff now. Because fuck, that's still going to be hard work, but. This was probably backbreaking compared to, to what it is now. Yeah, I mean, it'll always go down as one of my favourites. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so good. You know, like I lo- I love films for the eighties. I love these kind of things. You know, the practical effects and everything. Uh, it's like you know, people gave Suicide Squad a hard time. We gave it a hard time, but they did do practical. They went yeah, practical. Yeah. There was very there was CGI, but very little to some. To, to some extent, and you know, look at Killer Croc from the ground yeah, up. He yeah. was practical effects. That is something that needs to be credited, credited because it's hard work to do. And I felt Killer Croc wouldn't have looked quite as good in CGI, even though you looked at him and you were like, "Oh my god, he looks weird." I think he looked what I would have expected him. Yeah, he looked pretty the point jacket, on. The, 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 the crocodile skin, the, the teeth. It just, to me, worked. And see, if you're an actor and you're going to put yourself through that, I fucking salute you. <laughs> to, 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 like, the fucking moon and back. Like, that's fucking a lot of work. Cool, cool, cool. Now, James. Oh, fuck me. Here we yes, go. Yes, 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 yes. Fucking we are on to that point of the show. The show of James's knowledge of money from 1987. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> So, James, the game. production budget for this movie was $15 million. $15 million? $15 million. I would have guessed that. No. I think that was No. You've got, th- as per every other show, you have three, and only three chances, to redeem yourself and show your big brainy knowledge. How much did this m- movie make at the cinema, James? <sighs> No, 1987. So 15 million. 30 years ago, 15 million. Are we talking it's opening weekends? Are we, uh, we are on about, in general, worldwide. For its time in the cinema? Yes, 1987. 90 mil? Close. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Fuck me, this is going to be fucking shameful if you get this right. What's your second guess? Am I above it or am I below I it? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Oh, I'm going to say it made mayor. 
Is it is it in the region of a hundred? Is that your second guess? Yeah. Close. Closer. Closer. Oh. Fuck me. Uh, last. Last mm, guess. I'm going to say 107 million. Oh, James, you've done so well there. I oh, fucked it, didn't I? 98. 98. Bastard. Well, I'm going to take 100. Right, I'm going to take 100. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was pretty good, right? Yeah, I wasn't on the nose, but it's been the best you've, one you've, I've had. I know you, it's actually been the best one. Aye, 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 okay, I'm taking that, I'm taking that. Finally, I've won one. <laughs> no, you've still lost. Fuck up, <laughs> fuck up, fuck off. Go away, don't talk to me. I'll edit this show to make you out to be the biggest bitch there is. <laughs> and that's a diva. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it deserves it. It deserves more, yeah. to be honest. Oh, like. easily. <laughs> uh, I'm sure... But 98 uh, million back in the East yeah. was, like, had that but a lot of cocaine. Okay. I think <laughs> like, it was maybe the 20th or 15th anniversary I'm, I'm not quite sure but they brought out the special edition with a couple extra scenes you see predator a little bit more uh you see the predator skinning someone or cleaning their skull and stuff so there's the the eventual re-release and stuff will have drawn a hell of a lot more money for it which you know is a good thing and then well can you can you argue with 98 million from 15 that that was enough to get all these sequels and stuff made. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I grant it. Um, I think there's plenty of good and bad. Yeah. In terms of, like, what they actually... What came from it. <laughs> yeah, what came from it. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, this came out at the same time, sort of like, you know, you had your Alien and you had, I mean, Star Wars had been it. So sci-fi yeah. was a big thing. Oh, yeah. So obviously it was only natural that sci-fi horror slasher-esque fucking what the fuck ever was to follow. No, did we expect Arnie to be the hero? Probably no. not. But he sells it. Yeah. And he's, the thing is I like about Arnie, you can get behind him. Like you can you can root for him. Ah, uh, usually Arnold gets behind women. <laughs> ah, ah, so it's nice for people to get behind Arnold. And, get, and, and show him some support because he needs it right now. Ah. And he can get behind me anytime. Like it's a, uh, I, I I think he's just a character, somewhat like you know what, what Stallone was. Yeah, you know it, it's that sort of thing. Like look at look at Arnie in the Running Man. Oh, you just want Arnie to win. <laughs> like, you just <laughs> want him to win. Like that's it. And you, 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 you enjoy like wh- y- I think it's his voice. I think his voice is just iconic. Yeah, it really this is fucking. Oh, there's a lot about Arnie that's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> apart from Batman and Robin, but we'll we'll get to that. Ah, <laughs> I'd kill the dinosaurs. The Ice Age. Ah. He went through his cheesy. Oh moments. come on! They just went. All right, Arnie. Here's a ton of funny lines. It'll be funny. You've seen it in it. your go accent, for, please. It's for the kids, aren't it? It's for the kids. <laughs> ah. <laughs> can I show my pecs? No, because you're going to be in a big suit of armour. Oh, can it be muscular armour? <laughs> you know, everything's muscle wear, aren't it? Like, I just, I love them. Oh, we all love them. So, James, what would you rate it out of ten? Oh, Predator, what would you rate this Predator's movie? A, Predator's a wee beauty. It's a wee gem. Is it with its problems? Nah, it's got it's got its problems, but but the use of location, the practical effects, story, the story itself, and the acting, the acting might be like proper eighties cheese, but I don't like it at nine. nine. Yeah, good old nine. I like it. I I just think it's great. I I think it's fun, even though it's tense and scary. It's fun. It reinvented. I think what a sort of sci-fi horror is because the scariest thing about it is the predator and that's what it should be yeah a villain you can't see and when you do see it you're like i would prefer just not to see you mate <laughs> do you know <laughs> what i mean it's like that and i think that does it really well so i get a nine i think it's a fucking gem and it'll forever be a gem and it's just if you want a big 80s fucking slab of cheese slab of cheese with fighting and guns and, and pecs, don't forget pecs and, and biceps. With pecs and men and soldiers. Oh, look at the oil in my chest. Ah, aye, I go for it. Do you know what film actually takes a lot? I think the Predator. What's that? The new Kong, Skull Island. 
Mm. Subtly, subtly. Like, there's bits, like, obviously, where Samuel Jackson's character kind of loses his shit because he loses a couple of soldiers and he wants revenge. Bits like that really th- put me in mind the Predator. I was like, oh, this puts me in mind the Predator. You know, just, just that's that kind of story. Trying to fight an impossible enemy, which will lead to basically most of you getting fucking killed. I kind of, I was kind of inspired by Predator a wee bit with Skull Island, just a wee bit, and I think they did look at it for reference. So, I, d- I do, I do, I do, th- I do thoroughly enjoy Predator and I always will. I think it's just an absolute beauty of a film. Uh, like I said, this has been one of my top movies of all time. Anytime I watch it, I'm always sucked into it. It's, it's one of those movies that you really, really can't take your eyes off of. Visually, yeah, it's a little bit dated now, but... Thank you for when it came out, do you know what I mean? From when I watched it, I, I can't even remember the first time i seen it. Definitely before 10. So, within 10 years of that being out, I watched it. And you're it up, scared you're, me. You're coming up for th- you I'm, I'm 30 the now. You're 30 the now. Yeah. So you were alive when this came out? I was one. Uh, oh, one? But not, not even one. I was less than one. This came out uh, 12th of June, 1987. I was 10th of November, 1986. <laughs> oh, fuck. You weren't even one. I know. So, uh. So within 10 years of this movie being out, I watched it and it scared me. Same with Aliens and Terminator. But don't know what it was. It just one of those movies that like gives me the fear like what uh, whenever i watch back nightmare on elm street now it's it always gives me chills up my spine the, the, those same scenes that scared me back then scare me now yeah anything that i watched teen onwards uh, going back i don't think resonated as much with me as say something like predator or aliens did because that's what I watched at such a young age, it, it maybe stuck with me more. I, maybe it was because I had those movies on tape and stuff, and it, we're, we're not like we are nowadays, where we've got streaming services, we've got millions of DVDs, where we can watch anything we want, anytime. So maybe just re-watching all those movies years ago has actually stuck with me more. Well, I mean, I've said it before, I mean, I think that, Anybody who watches films nowadays can feel a bit. They don't understand how privileged it is. I mean, yeah, a definitely. Film is so hard, and I've always been one to appreciate where films came from. I mean, I love the surrealist movement. I love films like that. Really weird shit, but it's one of these things that movies and making films is an art form. Yeah, definitely. You know, to make anything, to make somebody sit down for an hour and a half of their lives and go. Really, to make them think, and I mean, even then, like while Predator does just live for the sole purpose of entertaining, there's no deep meaning to it. You can watch it, and you can kind of find Arnie's character quite relatable. Would we act the same way he would act in that situation, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe some films of today have better special effects and stuff like that. But see, for the time this was working at, it wasn't like pure in-your-face like special effects every scene. It was just when they mattered and when the Predator was about. And I think that works because in a change of pace, the Predator's much more technologically advanced and you would see things like that. So if you ask me, I think Predator does stand. And do you know something? I gave it a 9, but I'm fucking ready to give it a 10 right now. Like Nice. Well, I mean, uh, now that you say it, I actually never rated it there. So looking back at nostalgia and everything and looking at every aspect of the movie, it is one of my favourites. It's always in my top ten or around that. It's mm, it's maybe just outside my top five, but for me, that's something I can't take away. That is a movie that's just stuck with me for maybe, I don't know, 22, 23 years. And it's... there. There is just something really special about it. It's... It's fun. It it's, you know what, people say, oh, I want a a story that's gonna make me think and whatever, blah blah blah. Like, no, the the best kind of movies are the ones where you just take your brain out, leave it to the side, and your sole attention is on what's in front of you. This this movie achieves that and more. It's got a, a very basic story. It's got a nice small cast. 
as in say 50 60 characters it's, it's maybe 10 fewer, fewer than 10 main characters including the predator all and happens in one location yeah it's one area might be the jungle which is fucking huge but it is all in there and it's a nice fun action movie it's got sci-fi elements it's got horror elements it's it's a genre breaking move. Uh, genre breaking. Genre Break defining. Defining maybe. Mm, yeah, it breaks down the walls between them. Yeah, Alien was a sci-fi horror movie. Then you had, uh, well, sci-fi horror thriller. Then Aliens was a sci-fi action. All very good, and I like those kind of films that ap appeal to more than one base of fans. You know. Yeah, I mean, like I say, most films will either inspire you or just help you take your brain out of a stressful day or a stressful situation. Predator is definitely the latter. You know, it takes you out. It's not going to change your life, but, you know, it does that. And that's why, like, the thing we think with Predator is, and not to offend anybody who made it, but anybody could have made Predator. Yeah. And I find that quite inspiring. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's so practical, simple, with a little bit of special effects in there. And I would like to say I could make Predator. That with fifteen really million dollars, with fifteen million dollars, I'll give you Predator, and I think that's inspiring to sit there. But and you go, can't give me Arnie, though. I can't give you Arnie. No, but you could be Arnie. Oh, don't tempt me. If it do it, we can kill it. <laughs> but on that note, yes, on that note, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast today. I'm, yeah. Well, we apologise for our accent. You can apologise, because you went a bit far. But uh, I might have went a little bit far, some of which will probably be cut out of this, because I'm not a total dick. Uh, yeah, but we're glad that you listened in. Uh, if you have any recommendations for us to listen, uh, to watch, if you have any recommendations for us to watch and review, then drop us a comment on Facebook, Twitter... Uh, where you can find us at Glaswegian Geeks on both. You can listen to our stuff over at SoundCloud and iTunes and YouTube. So have a wee search for Glaswegian Geeks and we'll be sticking some content up soon, hopefully soon, and on YouTube. You can also find the latest stuff on our new website. <gasps> oh my god, which James! Is gonna be, which is you know available for your discretion. You can find all of the information about Ripped Apparel by a t shirt. And you can find all of our recent video uploads, recent podcasts, etc., etc. And you can find out a little bit about us, why not? And you can read a few articles. Yes, so yes, yes. If you like reading, if you're into it. And so on that note, this is the Glaswegian Geeks signing off once again. Yes, yes. Thank you all for joining us again for a lovely show. Geek out, everybody. <laughs> Get to the chopper and geek out. Bye. <laughs>